If you're looking for the best laptop for photo editing, whether in Photoshop or Lightroom, then you found the right video. In this video, we're gonna work our way from the budget category all the way up to the high-end premium laptops, talk about the differences between them to help you make the right purchasing decision for your needs, and also understand the specs to make sure you purchase the right laptop from a performance standpoint. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into that entry level category, looking at the HP Pavilion laptop. Now this one starts at the $650 range, and this is a fantastic laptop with the performance you need to get started. Now I know that things are getting quite expensive in the world and I totally understand and empathize if you don't have, you know, kind of this initial entry level, but I, the reason I start off at this price point is because I don't want you to get a laptop that underperforms. I don't want you to get a laptop that you're disappointed with. I uh, did a series recently about the you know cheapest laptop on Amazon, and that thing could barely open uh, Photoshop. And it was it was about a two hundred dollar laptop. So keep in mind that by getting up to this level, you're going to want to make sure that you have the performance you need. Now, this laptop does have the Ryzen 5 7530U, and this is the latest 7000 series processor. So if you're looking to save a little money, perhaps you could go ahead and get last generation, the 6000 series, and that would still perform well. But you want to make sure that you have at least 8 gigs of RAM, as you can see the HP Pavilion laptop here has, and at least 256 gigs of solid state drive. If you get any lower than this, the operating system alone takes up quite a lot of space on a heart, on a drive. And then you add any of your apps, add any of your files, and immediately you're running out of storage space. So I really recommend people start at 256, if not 512. Now, next up on the list here, you see this has a 67% sRGB. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with color gamut ranges and Delta E, color accuracy, the color gamut range, sRGB, is the amount of colors that a laptop can reproduce on its screen. The range, basically the area that it covers. The delta E is the accuracy at which it can reproduce that area. So sRGB, and then you have Adobe RGB, which gets a little bit bigger of an area. I have full videos about this on my channel, really diving in in-depth explanations. I definitely recommend watching those if you want to learn more. I'll link them up at the end of this video. Now, next laptop on the lineup here is the Asus VivoBook 16. This laptop has a range of about $600 to $700. Comes in last year's i5 1240p and also this year's Ryzen 5 7530 you and it has integrated graphics now this one also has eight gigs of ram which is a decent starting point again if i were personally buying a laptop i would get it with 16 gigs of ram now the way ram works is if you open up a program on your laptop say google chrome you're going to be using about one to two gigs of ram your operating system alone is going to be using anywhere from about a half a gig of ram to sometimes a full gig depending on how many background tasks you have running so right there, you're already up to about three to four gigs of RAM usage. Next, you're going to go ahead and open, say, Photoshop. Photoshop can use anywhere from three to six gigs of RAM. Right there, you're already tapping the ceiling, and your computer is starting to have to bottleneck some of the processes in order to keep running efficiently. Let's say you want to open Spotify or some other music player. There's another gig or two of RAM, and you can see how quickly RAM can be eaten up. Now, keep in mind that if you're somebody who uses Photoshop in an intense way, you're using tons and tons of layers. You're opening up tons of raw files, raw photo files. You will burn through even more RAM. I had a digital artist on here a couple of months ago, a comic book artist. I interviewed him and he said with 16 gigs of RAM, it wasn't enough for the complexity of his projects. And he had to return a Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 because it was bottlenecking because of the RAM usage. So make sure that if you think you're going to be doing heavy Photoshop work, that you get 16 to 32 gigs of RAM. These eight gigs of RAM are a great starting point, but they just are not as good for intense work, in, for intense creative work inside of the Adobe products. Next up on the list, we have the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED, a great laptop for a uh, high TDP processor. You can see this has the i5-13500H. So if you're somebody who's doing a lot of heavy lifting in Photoshop, you want to have a lot of ceiling to be able to run tasks at a high level for a long period of time, the H-series processor will do it. Um, these lower TDP processors like the Ryzen 5 7530U or the i5 1240P, they can run at intense levels, but they can only do it for short periods of time because their thermal limits are not as high. Um, so just keep in mind that the H-series processors are going to be ones found in gaming laptops or high-end uh, creator laptops, uh, but they don't have as good of battery life. So it's really a trade-off 
Honestly, uh, at this category, I would lean you more towards a low TDP processor because you don't really have the dedicated GPU to benefit from that H series processor. All right, next up, we're going to be looking at the Acer Swift OLED and the Acer Swift X. Now, keep in mind, anytime you see OLED, this is an area that you're most likely going to have a laptop that has a 100% sRGB. So the Asus ZenBook and the Acer Swift 3 OLED are fantastic laptops in regards to having color accurate, bright, really strong colorful screens. Um, if you want that, these are the laptops to get. But also you can see the Lenovo Yoga 7i and 9i has a really nice quality screen, also having 100% sRGB. So you don't always need OLED to get that high color accuracy, but it is a good tell of a, of a screen that will have good color accuracy. So the Swift 3 OLED and the Swift 3X are two great laptops. Uh, the Swift 3X comes with a dedicated GPU, where the Swift 3 OLED is a non-dedicated GPU laptop. If I were going to be going ahead and getting the Swift uh, laptop, I would lean towards the Swift X to get the most benefit out of it. Um, as far as a performance standpoint, but if you wanted really, really good color accuracy, I would lean towards the OLED from a quality aspect um, of the of the color gamut range. Thinking about what you're going to be using this laptop for in the future, if you're only going to be doing Photoshop and Lightroom work, you don't need a dedicated GPU. Uh, it's not really as important as having quite a bit of RAM in your laptop. So if you're looking at two laptops and you're like, okay, this one comes with a dedicated GPU, but this one comes with 32 gigs of RAM, I'm going to be using Photoshop, then honestly, the RAM will be more beneficial to you. The only uh, caveat to that would be if you're using multiple monitors. So let's say you want to hook up two monitors to your laptop to have like a nice dual screen setup. The dedicated GPU would help power those screens and not pull away from your performance inside of the actual application. Something like the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i was an awesome concept. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later. However, the performance was a little underpowered in my opinion, because having a low TDP processor try to run two screens, when you went ahead, when I went ahead and ran this Photoshop test, the performance was not what I had hoped because a lot of the performance is going towards running these two screens. So when running multiple screens, a graphical processor GPU, graphics processing unit, is very important. So there's that little caveat about why you might want to choose a uh, dedicated GPU. Next up on the list, like I said, the Lenovo Yoga 7i and 9i. Woo, one of my favorite laptops for creators uh, from Lenovo. This thing is so comfortable to hold in your hand. It has a really great build quality, nice rounded edges. This is a great laptop. It has a nice large trackpad. So really nice for on the go. Two-in-one laptop with great pen touch sensitivity comes with a pen and a nice carrying case. This is a, a great laptop. Also, awesome audio experience with the Bowers and Wilkins speaker here, here down the middle of the hinge. Great design, uh, premium build quality, aluminum, thin and light, great battery life. Can't beat this one. One of my favorites. All right, next up on the list here, we're going to have the HP Envy. Probably my second favorite laptop from HP. My first favorite would have to be the HP Spectre. It's a little bit better build quality, a little larger trackpad. I like it slightly better. But the HP Envy is still great. Um, as you can see, it comes with a Ryzen 5 7530U as well, 8 gigs of RAM. You can go on HP's website and actually upgrade that to 16 if you would like uh, in their purchasing order. Uh, but then again, this laptop does only have a 67% sRGB. So, you know, when you look at this compared to the Spectre, which I think is on this page here, the Spectre has a higher sRGB. So the Spectre is the more of the premium laptop. In this uh, setup, the NV is a little bit more of the budget-friendly laptop. Now, keep in mind, if you're curious about the exact pricing of any of these laptops, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase to those links, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that is what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. These are estimated prices. Um, it's what I was able to find during putting this list together, um, but these are not the actual live prices. They tend to shift. Now, keep in mind, if you're looking at the, this lineup and you're like, Ben, you're talking about all these laptops, I'm looking at a laptop and it's not on this list. Is that, do I'm not looking at a crappy laptop? No, not necessarily. These are just my favorites. If I listed every laptop that would be good for graphic design, this would be a four hour video. But I try and keep these videos around the 20 minute mark. Um, so that way you get as much bang for buck uh, out of your time as possible. So just look at the specs. Look at how I'm discussing the specs with you. If this laptop isn't on the lineup, then just, just do your own kind of relatability to the performance, the screen quality, 
and uh, what I'm talking about here in the price point. And you can hopefully make a really good purchasing decision. You can also comment below and ask people in the community their suggestions. If I uh, have some time, I jump into the comment section and answer some of those questions. I do have four children, and so I don't really have a lot of time. But when I do, I love to be helpful. <laughs> All right, next up on the lineup, <clears throat> we have the uh, Apple MacBook Air M2. 13 inch and the latest 15 inch man if you're looking for a budget friendly ah, not budget friendly if you're looking for a 15 inch screen from apple this is technically budget friendly and the reason i say that is because if you want to get a big screen on an apple product you have to go with the apple macbook pro and the apple macbook pro starts if i'm not mistaken at like 2600 dollars for this 16 inch model and so that you can get a 15 inch model apple macbook air for $14.99 at a starting price, that is great. Because for a long time, you either bought an Air at an 11 inch, a 13 inch, or a 13 inch Pro for you know more of the cheaper lineup of the Mac products, or you had to go all the way up to the $2,600 product. And so now that we have a nice 15 inch model option, I'm really excited. Uh, my wife actually just recently got the 13 inch pro and she was really struggling with deciding between the air and the 13. The reason she went for the 13 is she likes the thicker build quality. She doesn't like how flimsy the 15 felt and she wanted to have the, uh, the fan. Um, the fan allows for more performance. The airs don't come with a fan where the MacBook pro 13 comes with one fan. And that just allows that if the laptop does get pushed pretty hard, it doesn't go into thermal throttling mode. It actually just starts to cool the laptop using the fan. Um, and so that allows for more performance as she pushes the laptop harder. She does a lot of photo editing. Um, and so that's kind of her jam. And so that's why she went with the 13 Pro rather than going with the 15 Air or the 13 Air. Um, she just liked that, that better about it. Um, next up, we have the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. This cool thing about this laptop is you can actually get it in the cheaper version and it comes with the same CPU. A little hack, if you want to save some money on the 360, Go for the regular 360, not the Pro 360. You can also, it also comes in a smaller form factor, the 14-inch model. Um, but they have the same processor. They have the i7-1360P. Um, so you can get the same performance. However, this 16-inch model is a beauty. Let's see if I can get this thing open for you real quick. It has a massive screen, massive trackpad, and of course, as you saw, the pen magnets to the top cover. Um, this is a wonderful laptop, and it is so thin and light. I love this year's model. Um, going from that 16 by 9 aspect ratio in the 15 to this 16 by 10 aspect ratio with the 16, woo, it is a gorgeous laptop. Really, really great buy. The best score that you can get in Photoshop out of a thin and light low TDP laptop. This is the like the best you can get. It's it's gonna put you back a pretty penny, but it is a fantastic laptop from a performance standpoint for a thin and light laptop with great battery life. Uh, moving on from there, we have the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. This is a great laptop as well. If you're looking for something that has a lot of punch, um, you can get this in both integrated and dedicated graphics. This model is new and improved with the larger trackpad in 2023. This came with a small trackpad last year, and it was one of my favorite laptops, but I turn people away from it often if they wanted a big trackpad because the trackpad was just, it was tiny. It was silly. So they put the big trackpad on this laptop this year, and this has become like the perfect laptop for people who want to be on the go digital artist with the two in one screen. I mean, look at that two in one screen, touch screen, great touch sensitivity does not come with a pen. So you're going to want to go ahead and pick up like the Asus pen, it's like the Asus pen 2.0 or something. That's the pen I use and it works great. Um, and then also this comes with, like I said, integrated and dedicated graphics. So if you're somebody who does like light, uh, to medium, uh, Photoshop work, then I would go with the integrated graphics. If you're somebody who's a heavy Photoshop user, I would get the dedicated GPU with 32 gigs of Ram. The 32 gigs of Ram is going to give you that ceiling you need. If you're working in big raw files, like hundreds of raw files at a time, let's say, you know, you're a wedding photographer, really just a photographer and professional photographer in general, who's going to paid shoots this is the way to go with that 32 gigs of RAM. Integrated graphics only comes with 16. Dedicated graphics comes with 32. So just keep that in mind. But whew, 
one of my favorite laptops this year. Might might be my favorite over the G14, which is really, really hard because I'm a huge G14 fan. And then lastly, the Apple MacBook Pro 13 M2. Great laptop. Man, like my wife just got that. I hadn't seen one of those in a couple years, and it's it's beautiful. It's a really, really good build. Um, keep in mind the SOC chip. So basically, you have a system on a chip when it comes to Apple rather than having separate parts. And uh, the way I've explained this before is like you have a CPU, you have your RAM, and you have a GPU for most part most parts in a laptop, right? So there's your three components. And actually, let's do this up here. So CPU, GPU, RAM. There you go. So all three components work together, but they're separated. When it comes to Apple, it looks more like this. Everything is a system on a chip. And so when you have RAM, what you're doing is instead of having it where it has to communicate from RAM to CPU and it has like this gap where it has to transfer the information and a lot and some information and power can be lost in that transfer. It is unified. And so the way I've come to kind of see in from a performance standpoint through my benchmarks is that eight gigs of Apple RAM, eight gigs of Apple unified memory is the same or very close to 16 gigs of ununified memory on like a Windows setup where you have your RAM separate from your actual chip. So eight gigs is great for the Apple products. 16 is almost more like 24 or 32. And so you can get great performance out of that. So when I say for me personally, I would purchase a Windows laptop at 16. I would purchase a uh, Apple laptop starting at eight. My preferred would be to get an Apple laptop at 16. And my preferred would be to get a Windows laptop at 32, just to raise the ceilings so that RAM doesn't bottleneck the system. It's such a silly reason for your system to bottleneck because a RAM upgrade is not as expensive as having to buy an entirely new laptop because you didn't just go for the RAM upgrade in the beginning. All right, next up we have the HP Victus and the HP Omen. Now, what you're looking at here on this lineup is a bunch of laptops that have dedicated GPUs. Now, my disclaimer here is that, in my opinion, for photo editing, RAM is more important than GPU, as I've said in this video. If you could tell me, Ben, you can choose a laptop with 32 gigs of RAM, or you can choose a laptop with a dedicated GPU for photo editing, I would go for the 32 gigs of RAM all day because it makes a bigger difference inside of Photoshop. However, like I said, if you're going to be gaming, if you're going to be getting into motion design, if you're going to be getting into video editing one day or 3D modeling, then you want to be able to future-proof yourself. And that's where getting a laptop with a high TDP processor, so an H or an HS series processor or an HX series processor from Intel, that would benefit you to future-proof yourself. Also, if you're going to be using multiple external monitors, sorry, I keep glancing over here because I'm like looking at the specs. So I'm looking at you. I'm just like, okay, what's the information on my screen? Anyway, if you're going to be getting a laptop setup with multiple monitors, then the de dedicated GPU will help power those monitors so you don't pull away performance from your programs. Similar to what I mentioned with the yoga book, how it pulled away performance because it was it's trying to run those those do tool dual tool two screens uh anyway so jumping in here hp victus great budget friendly laptop for photoshop for lightroom for gaming for video editing for motion design for 3d modeling it's a great entry point next on that we have the hp omen which is like the big papa of the victus you have an aluminum top cover uh, instead of the plastic build and then from there we have the lenovo legion slim pro 7 and the slim pro 9i honestly in my opinion the pro 9i is much more to talk about it had better performance the slim pro 7 uh from last year was just as good as the slim pro 7 from this year so if i'm going to talk about getting something from 2023 i'm going to push you towards the slim pro 9i because it's definitely more bang for buck um, next up is the asus zephyrus g14 one of my favorite laptops from 2022, uh, not necessarily one of my favorite laptops currently from 2023. The reason being is I've uh, only been able to review the base model and the base model from last year kicked the pants off the base model from this year. So if you're going to be considering an Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14, I wouldn't start for 2023 until the RTX 4070. I would not get the base base model. It doesn't have the performance, nor is it worth the price point. However, if you're going to get one of these from 2022, I'd get the RX 6700S model, and you can get them from BestBuy.com. Sometimes, not all the time. Check the live pricing in the description below for like $1,199 or $999 or 
1099 It's crazy the prices and sales that these laptops are on. So get one before they run out of stock because if you can get a 2022 model, you'll be saving a ton of money and they are killer performance and killer battery life. Now, this isn't a touchscreen, which is why the X13 to me is like the way better move for uh, somebody who wants a touchscreen and pen capabilities. But if you're just looking for performance and you don't care about that touchscreen, you could save some money, money, savings. Okay, so great laptop. Next up on the lineup is going to be the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. This is actually my daily driver laptop. It's the one that's running these slides right now. Um, this is a great laptop because it gets awesome battery life for an i7 12700H. Super shocked at how good this is. This is the Asus ZenBook Flip 15. It has the i7 12700H and Arc 370M, A370M graphics. And I can get usually around 6 to 10 hours of battery life on this laptop, which for a dedicated GPU and a H-series processor running at the same time, it is killer. Now, the model I have has 16 gigs of RAM. Um, sorry, I didn't update that chart there. You can get it in both 8 and 16 gigs of RAM. Personally, 16 is the way to go because I do a lot of multitasking. Right now, I'm you know, streaming out my screen while running Google Chrome and whatever else. And so it just is helpful to have that 16 gigs of RAM. And it has an OLED display, so it is 100% sRGB color accurate, which is fantastic. Next on the lineup is the Lenovo ThinkPad Z13. The most amazing thing about this laptop now, it doesn't have a dedicated GPU, but it made it on this list because it is more of the mid-range price point at $1,849. Holy tamale. Holy Toledo. Holy tomato. It is the best Windows laptop battery life I have ever seen on my channel. This laptop got around 20 hours of battery life. Now, this doesn't have a touchscreen display, but battery life and performance are this thing's forte. So definitely consider this laptop if you want really good battery life and great performance and a small thin and light form factor and premium build quality this has like a faux vegan leather top cover it's all aluminum it's just a it's a really neat laptop and uh, has awesome performance to go along with it um, like i said that one's 18 149 dollars and has a 100 percent srgb and 16 gigs of ram next up on the lineup is going to be one of the more unique laptops the microsoft surface laptop studio this is quite an expensive laptop for the i5. It's twelve. It's eleven ninety nine. That for an i5 is a bit expensive, but because of the screen being so flexible with the tilt out option and being able to do your pen and sketch on it, it's really cool. But as a photographer, I don't know if that's a benefit to you for touch ups. Maybe you know you're touching up somebody's face or their skin. It could be a benefit to you. I don't know. What kind of photographer are you? Do you have somebody who does a lot of touch ups or you shoot for perfection? It's a good question. Um, and then also it goes up to about $2,099. So it's definitely one of the more expensive laptops on this lineup, but it is a very unique and uh, has an awesome selling proposition. Next up would be the HP Spectre X360. Like I mentioned, one of my favorite laptops from HP, thin and light laptop, awesome build quality, large trackpad. Um, so this one is definitely something to write home about. Um, thin and light color accurate display. I mean, like, look how big that display is. It's almost like they stuck an iPad on this laptop. It's so crisp. It's so big. Uh, I really like this laptop. Now, if I was going to go between this and the Lenovo Yoga 9i, I'd be really hard pressed to make a decision. I think the reason I would lean towards the Lenovo uh, is because of that Bowers and Wilkins speaker and the nice rounded beveled edges. It just feels slightly more premium to me. I, I really like it, but this is still an awesome option if you're an HP fanboy or fangirl. Remember, links in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase or you want to check the live pricing. Those are there and available for you. Next up, we have one of the more unique laptops on the lineup as well, the Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Gen 3. You literally have an iPad or quote unquote a tablet on your keyboard deck. I have full reviews about this laptop. I think you should definitely check them out if you're interested in something unique and highly valuable. It makes the most sense to me that you would sketch on the keyboard deck because your hand can rest on the desk. You can sketch, it displays it up to your screen or vice versa. It is really functional, really cool laptop, has great performance. Um, not really good battery life, but really great performance. All right, we would not be able to do this video any justice if we didn't have the latest Lenovo Yoga Book 9i, the first ever true dual screen laptop. Man, they nailed this thing. Like I said, the stand, the pen, the mouse, 
the keyboard all come included with this laptop. The one downside, and I hope that they do a premium like creator version in the future, this laptop needs a dedicated GPU. It really does. In order to have great performance and still power these two screens, it needs to have a dedicated GPU combined with uh, perhaps a low TDP processor. I've actually never seen that happen. I would love them to see. I would love to see them put an i7 1360P in this with like Arc A7 uh, A370M, or you know even an RTX 4050 or a 4070 because I think that would be really cool. But I think having Intel do the GPU would be the best bet because it'd be great battery life and functionality. And it's like going crazy and I'm shaking it around. But yeah, great laptop, good battery life, not great battery life, dual screens, good performance, not great performance. But the functionality is what makes that laptop really amazing. All right, next up on the list, we have the Gigabyte Aero 14 and 16. Uh, this laptop has great performance, great build quality, but, mo but most of all, great color accuracy. 100% sRGB and 97% Adobe RGB. Um, this is a great laptop. Gigabyte does not get enough attention, in my opinion, because they make really good products. And honestly, the price point is pretty spot on for the performance and build quality and functionality you get. The one thing I do complain about with Gigabyte is their fan modes don't really function as well as I would hope. Like you click silent mode and it doesn't really give you much less or much more performance than when you're on like high performance mode. So that's one thing that's kind of weird, but otherwise I really like their laptops. Next up, we have the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 and 5i. If you followed my channel for long, you know I am currently a Le Lenovo Legion fanboy. Now that could change. Because I'm a fanboy of what products are doing the best, having the best performance, and have the best build quality. I would also say that I am a Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16 fanboy or an X13 fanboy. I'm a fanboy of great products. I'm not a fanboy of companies. So uh, right now, though, you know that I'm big on pushing the Legion Pro 5 and 5i because it's really like the best bang for buck from performance, build quality, usability standpoint for creators. They have highly bright screens, color accurate, and all at around the $1,200 to $1,800 price point. Honestly, the best bang for buck for me is around that $1,400 to $1,500 price point, which you can find great performance at. You could also shift yourself back and get a 2022 model and still get amazing performance. I've been promoting those videos lately, talking about how some of the best laptops are actually from 2021 or 2022 if you don't need the latest and the greatest performance. And most of us don't. Uh, however, if you want a future proof yourself, going for a 2023 latest model is a good idea, especially if you don't know if you're going to get into video editing. You don't know if you're going to get into motion design or 3D modeling, but you might in the future. Or, of course, if you're, you like to game on the side, um, that's a good reason to get a high-performing laptop as well. Next up is the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16, the big brother of the X13. Tons and tons of performance. Huge trackpad, two-in-one laptop. So this makes great for touch-ups, and it's huge. This is a huge screen. Great performance, great battery life for such a big laptop. And for how big it is, it's actually fairly thin and light. Um, so man, I can't say enough good things about this laptop. One of my favorite laptops from 2022 and 2023. Can't wait to actually review the latest 2023 model. This is a 2022. Um, but the only thing that changed is like the CPU and the GPU in this, this year's model. So... I'm looking forward to checking it out. The thing is with the newest 2023 model is they switch from Intel or switch from Rise into Intel. So I'm guessing we're not going to have as good a battery life as we had in 2022. So there's a hot tip. If you want great battery life out of this uh, Asus Republic Gamer Flow X16, I'd go for 2022. Because honestly, I think that i9 is going to underperform from a battery life standpoint. Next up is the ba ba bank breaker, the macbook pro 14 and 16 i have the m2 max here listed but m1 pro or m2 pro or m2 max will be great honestly hot tip as well if you want to get uh save so if you want to save some money not get some money if you want to save some money i would go for the m1 pro or the m1 max i didn't see a big enough bump in performance especially for photoshop what I would do is I would get the M1 Pro or M1 Max and I would bump it up to 32 gigs of RAM rather than paying for the M2 Pro or M2 Max and getting like 16 gigs of RAM because you're going to get more 
performance benefit from increasing the RAM than going a generation new with the processor because they didn't do anything crazy in the processor. I don't think we're going to see anything crazy until like M3 uh, because it just it just didn't do anything. M1 to M2, just they shouldn't have even like released it in my opinion. I mean, yeah, it was a good marketing move, but I just, there wasn't, it was nominal increase in performance. Uh, Lori and I from Technos have talked a lot about this. M1 was revolutionary. M2 is like, hey, keep buying our product because it's like 10% better. So, yep. Moving on to the Razer Blade 15, 16, and 18. Great laptop. The doppelganger of the Apple products. These come in with build quality and usability. Bright color accurate screens. They are phenomenal laptops. If you want build quality from a Windows laptop, you are not going to go wrong with the Razer Blade. Uh, next up is going to be one of my favorite laptops on the lineup. is going to be the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. This is the laptop with the dial on the keyboard deck. I cannot say enough good things about this laptop. It has amazing performance, a bright and color accurate OLED display. It has the dial. Now this year they've gone to the click trackpad rather than the click buttons. Personally, if you're going to pick up this laptop, I would go for the newest model because those click buttons last year were really frustrating. Basically, they had like three click buttons on the trackpad uh, below it instead of just allowing the trackpad to click, which really threw off the workflow in my opinion. So the 2023 model is truly worth the buy um, compared to the 2022 model for that alone because that was such a frustrating thing that would happen. Um, so yeah, great laptop. Definitely one of the more expensive laptops, but without a doubt, one of the best you can get. Next up on the lineup, we're going to be looking at the Asus ZenBook Pro 14 OLED. This laptop is really the sweet spot for creators. It's a little better priced than the StudioBook Pro 16 OLED, but still has an OLED display, still has an i9-13900H and an RTX 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM. So this is a absolute beast. Definitely a laptop you want to be considering if you're needing high performance, but also thin and light on the go with great color accuracy. Without a doubt, such a great laptop. Now, I do have the big brother here, the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X. And this laptop is really cool because just like the Studio Book OLED, it has the dial on top, it has a glass trackpad, and actually the keyboard deck lifts off of the the keyboard lifts off of the keyboard deck. And so this provides really nice ergonomics when you're using your laptop. Large OLED display, 16-inch display, great performance. Very, very good laptop. One of my favorites. It's like so hard to, to say which one I like more, StudioBook or ZenBook. Kind of lean towards the ZenBook. It's just a more comfortable laptop to use, and I like the refined details. They kind of took the best of what they did in the StudioBook, and they applied it to the ZenBook. Really good option for y'all. Now, it is quite expensive. I think the new 2023 model will probably be around the $26 to $2,800 price point. So it is a premium expensive laptop, but definitely uh, worth its weight in performance and features. Now the HP Envy, this is the premium, in my opinion, I got in trouble. I kind of got partially in trouble with this uh, for saying this from HP reps. I said the premium HP Omen, and they were like, that doesn't really make sense because it's an HP Envy. But my point is like, it's a very similar build to the HP Omen. It has very similar components, but they add some premium features to it to make it really stand out for creators. Higher quality screen, they have aluminum build quality, and of course you have a micro SD card reader if you're using a drone or, uh, you know, using micro SD cards. I don't, but somebody might. And so it's just a premium version to me of like the HP Omen. It's like that takes what the HP Omen does well and then adds a premium aesthetic to it. So great laptop, the HP Envy. Next up on the lineup will be the Dell XPS 15. This was actually the first model that I purchased when switching from Apple to Windows. And I was not disappointed. Aluminum top cover, aluminum bottom cover, carbon fiber, keyboard deck, great performance. Um, the only downside to this laptop to me is the RTX 4050. Not the highest performing GPU. I wish they would give it a 4060 or a 4070. That'd be the one bottleneck I would see with this laptop. But as a Photoshop or Lightroom user, you're going to have no problems with this laptop. It's going to be all the performance that you need. Um, and the battery life will be good, but not great with that i7-13700H. Now, the best from MSI, the Creator Pro Z16 HX Studio. Awesome laptop. Definitely puts you back a pretty penny. But that is one of the best from MSI for creators. Great for Photoshop, Lightroom. And then as you're working your way up, if you're getting into motion design, 3D modeling, video editing, that's going to be a rocket ship for those programs. 
Uh, lastly, we have on the list this Razer Blade 14. Ryzen 9 7940HS, great for battery life. RTX 4060, really solid GPU for that thin and light laptop. Kind of wish it was a 4070, like our friend over here, the Asus ZenBook Pro 14 OLED. Personally, I would lean towards the Asus ZenBook Pro 14 OLED if I were you, because it's going to have just as premium of an of aesthetic and build quality, but it's going to have that RTX 4070. However, if you're looking for battery life, that Ryzen 9 7940HS is going to have better battery life. Um, but punch for punch, it's a really good laptop. Remember that there are links in the description if you want to check the live pricing or make a purchase. And of course, pop your comments and questions below. Either myself or somebody in the community will help you further guide your purchasing decision. Click or tap the screen here for more videos I talked about during this video, and I will see you in the next video.